want to welcome everyone who's joined us by live stream this morning. Praise God. We are, we're getting this thing down to where we uh, don't give you much time to get that third or fourth cup of coffee. Amen. That we get you in the house with us really quickly. Amen. You have your Bibles this morning. Uh, be turning to Ephesians chapter 1. Matter of fact, uh, brother, do we have any Bibles back there still? Praise the Lord. Brother Roy, if anybody in here don't have a Bible, we have loaner Bibles. I'll give you a reason. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures today. And for our visitors or people who haven't been coming here very long, they, you may or may not hear something that uh, if you don't have a Bible to verify it for yourself, you may not believe it. Amen. But that just because you may not have heard it before does not mean it's not true. Amen? So we, let, we ask that everybody either bring their Bible, have their phone or their tablet, whatever way you have means of getting to the Scriptures. But we want everybody to read their own Bible. Amen? Amen? Amen. Anybody else need a Bible? Am I good? All right. You know, we've been teaching for quite some time now, really, about faith. And uh, we've been teaching a lot about how we must, it's a must that we put action to our faith. Uh, and really that our faith will not work if we don't put action to it. James chapter 2 verse 20, you don't have to turn there, just write it down. Uh, it says, faith without works is dead. How many of you are familiar with that scripture? Amen. We've learned that the works that God is talking about uh, is putting the word in our heart. You'll hear me tell you many, many times you have to put the word in your heart for it to start coming out of your mouth, which is the second thing that we're learning about our actions. We have to sow the word uh, with our confession. The third thing we've learned, and we talked about that last week, was we also have to water the word. And we water the word with our praise, with our thanksgiving, thanking God for what he's already given us. Amen. So God has said that when we practice these principles, our faith will not only produce God's blessings in our life, but our faith will also overcome uh, the attacks of our enemy. Anybody in here ever been attacked by the devil? If you haven't, that means you're not doing anything for God. Amen. We all get attacked by the devil. <clears throat> but we're not going to give him glory. I'm going to teach you today, and we're going to start teaching uh, today something that I've taught before, that there's a way to keep the devil off of you. But you got to do it. I can't do it for you. Husbands, you can't do it for your wives. Wives, you cannot do it for your husband. We're all individuals. Amen? So I want to talk to you this morning about uh, another aspect of putting action to our faith, and that's us walking in divine authority. Uh, the title of my message today is Divine Authority. I could add a little a asterisk on the back of that saying, what are you doing with your authority? But we'll talk about that more in the future. Amen? Amen. But divine authority. Divine authority is an important aspect of our covenant. I talked to you about covenant a few minutes ago. We all need to understand that uh, our covenant with God gives us divine authority. And as I look at the body of Christ as a whole, what I see and hear convinces me of this, that most believers do not, do not walk in the authority that they have. And I do not mean that as a criticism. But most Christians have never even really heard about divine authority. And it's because many of them may have come from a church and never taught about divine authority. And that's what we have today is we have, and I'm not criticizing other churches, I'm just telling you, uh, many churches, because they don't want to answer questions about divine authority, and they don't really want to get into the depths of the Word of God, they don't teach their congregation anything about authority. We're not going to be like that. Amen. Amen. See, I think the, the, the enemy has deceived so many of today's churches 
or really church leaders that divine authority is never even mentioned to the congregation. And because of that, then when folks visit a word church like they're visiting today, then they're going to hear or read things out of their own Bible, uh, but they're going to hear truths that they've never heard or read before. And we praise God for that. I praise God that you're hearing the truth. Amen. I mean, after all, our Savior said what? He said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And one of those truths is that that we have divine authority. Can can you say amen? amen? And listen, if you and I ever expect to walk Uh, through this life in victory, we not only need to know we have authority, we need to know how to use that authority. But our plan today, this is going to be a series, so just plan on it, pack you a lunch, amen? We're going to camp here until we get it, amen? But our plan today is to establish through the scriptures that every believer, turn to your neighbor and say he's talking about you, so don't doze off. That every believer has divine authority. You're not going to get it. You already have it. How many born again people do we have in here? Then you all have authority right now. Amen. It don't matter if you've only been saved a couple minutes. The person that gets saved right now will have just as much authority that I have, or really Jesus had. Amen. It's the same authority. It was given by God. It was given away by Adam. It was restored by Jesus. And now I have it. And now you have it. Amen. Hallelujah. So, if I have authority, now here's where it gets touchy. If I have authority, then when situations arise in my life that have to be dealt with, then I'm the one that has to deal with them because God won't. I didn't say he couldn't. I said he won't. He gave you dominion. He gave me dominion. So for me to pray to God to do something for me about one of my situations is actually saying that his word is a lie because he gave me dominion way back over there in Genesis. Amen. Amen. Praise God. See, he expects me to accept the responsibility and exercise my authority over the devil. He expects you to exercise your authority over the devil. He don't expect you to come to pastor and get pastor to exercise his authority. I will. I will pray for you. Okay? But me praying for you and getting the devil off of you in here, guess what? He's just going to go out the door and wait on you. So if you don't take the authority of God with you outside the doors, he's just going to meet you out there. He'll start lying to you just like he did before. How many of you know the devil's a liar? So here's another truth. One of them truths that sets you free. Here's another one of those truths that every Christian needs to realize. That God has already done everything he's going to do about the devil. He's already done it. He sent his son Jesus. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus stretched out his arms and said, It is finished. Their part is done. Period. Amen. Jesus has already whipped the devil. How many of you know that? He whipped him through his death, burial, and resurrection. But even though the devil is defeated, listen to me, he still has a right to wreak havoc in the lives of those folks that allow him to. And again, wives... Your husband cannot keep the devil off of you. Husbands, your wives cannot keep the devil off of you. We are individuals. Y'all can work together. Here's how Miss Brenda, Brenda and I work together. If I would slip and I would be being attacked by the devil in my early years, she would remind me of the word. 
And then, of course, she would say, you need to practice what you preach. I'm going to tell every one of you here today that every one of you are called to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every one of you that's been in this church for any length of time has heard at least one message on faith, one message on authority. Amen? So it's up to you. It's up to the men and women, the husbands and wives. If your wife falls short, it's up to you, men, to remind her of the word. Not take the blunt end of the sword and beat her over the head with it, but speak the truth in love, the Bible said. And men, if you fall short, you ought to be able to receive from your wife. Amen. This is all free, guys. I'm not, this ain't in my notes. I'm just, I'm just going to be led by the Holy Ghost today, okay? And I'm going to tell you that each of us are responsible for our own selves. Amen. I can keep the devil off of my wife when she's in my presence or if she says, baby, help me. But then it's still when she gets alone, and I'm not saying she does, I'm just using her so I don't offend anybody in here and y'all walk out. Uh, you know, <clears throat> it's always best to use the first person, right? Keep that word you out of my conversation. I always talk about me. It's all about me. Anyway, let's move on. Hallelujah. Jesus has already whipped the devil, but he has a, uh, he has a right to be in your life if you allow him to. It is our responsibility to use, <clears throat> excuse me, our authority over the devil. But <clears throat> what many believers are doing because they have not been taught can I get a little bit of air up here, please? Air condition. And listen, I'm going to get the ACs fixed, but if you're sitting in a cold spot, you're welcome to move. The warmest spots are in the middle right here. Yeah, if you really want a warm spot, come on up here with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Glory to God. Whew. Hallelujah. It's our responsibility to use our authority over the devil. But many believers, what they're doing because they have not been taught is they beg and plead for God to do something. They'll beg and plead God, please, God, can't you see what I'm going through? Do something, Jesus. And Jesus has already done everything he's going to do. <clears throat> I know that's a sobering thought, guys, but it's the truth. Where's Jesus at? That's right. Is he down here on earth? <clears throat> Only in your heart. <clears throat> and if Jesus is going to do anything in your life, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to have to let the Jesus that's in your heart come out. Amen. You got to do it. Hallelujah. We need to come to grips, guys, <clears throat> with the fact that God has put all the responsibility of dealing with the devil in our hands. That's why I went, and I'm going to give you some more scripture to verify this. That's why when poor folks come in me and they say, well, God's in charge. No, he's not. And I'm going to show you that in scripture. I'm showing you some of the scriptures right now. I'm going to show you more scriptures today that prove that he left you in control. Amen. James 4, 7 is one of them. It says, therefore, submit to God. We know God's in, in, on the throne, right? And Jesus is at his right hand. Praise God. I'm not elevating man above God or even equal with God. The Bible says we were created a little below God. Hallelujah. It says angels. Now, I'm getting ahead of myself. But that word angels that I'm going to talk to you about here in a few minutes, <clears throat> actually in the Greek means Elohim, which is God. Amen? So it says, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee <clears throat> from you. Notice it is you and me who has to do the resisting. It's not praying or asking God to resist the devil for me. I submit myself to God. I submit myself to his word. 
And therefore, I take my place of authority and resist the devil in my life. And praise God, the devil flees. Matter of fact, I don't have very many uh, uh, attacks from the devil per se anymore at all. My biggest uh, enemy is really, I'm a, your biggest enemy too, is it's your own flesh. We just don't want to be obedient to God's word sometimes. But we need to quit giving the devil credit for everything. People saying, well, the devil's after me. Well, he is if you say he is. My first thing is, uh, would you let him out from under your feet for? Isn't that where Jesus put him? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We are submit to, submit to God and resist the devil. Amen? Amen? We must do it. Not pray that God will resist him for me. I have to do it. It's my responsibility. Everybody say, it's my responsibility to resist the devil. Now, look at this in Matthew chapter number 10. <clears throat> Matthew chapter number 10, <clears throat> verse number seven and eight. And in this, in what we're fixing to read, Jesus commanded you and I to number one, preach the gospel. He commanded you and I to heal the sick. He commanded you and I, this is uh, Matthew 7 and 10, 7 and 8. He commanded you and I to cast out devils. He commanded you and I to raise the dead. I think a lot of the dead that we need to raise is our own self sometimes. Jesus commanded us to do all that. So we're supposed to go into the world. We're supposed to sow the seed of God's word. We're supposed to water the seed that someone else may have sown. We're st supposed to do, be doing all that, not God. And to be totally honest, nothing is going to get done unless you and I do it. Amen. People are saying, oh God. Please send revival, Father. I'll tell you what, you start exercising your authority, <clears throat> you start healing the sick and resisting the, the devil and raising the dead. I, I tell you what, the first dead person you raise, <laughs> that'll bring revival. <laughs> Amen. But didn't Jesus tell us to do that, guys? <clears throat> I'm not going to get into it, but he told us to do greater things than he did. I just want to walk in the things that he did on a daily basis. Praise God. Not for me and not for us to give us glory, but to give him glory. The body of Christ as a whole needs to get a supernatural revelation of the power and the authority it really has. When we as believers get a hold of this truth, and we fully understand the authority that we have, not going to get, but we have, then we will no longer put up with poverty. We'll no longer put up with sickness. We'll no longer put up with sin. And we'll no longer put up with any mental depression or worry or anger or anything else you can put there. Just fill in the blank. When you get a, a hold of the authority that you have, you won't put up with the devil or anything he tries to put on you anymore. It's as simple as this. No, you don't, Satan. I recognize you. Get thee behind me. But the thing of it is, we as Christians don't want to open our mouth and say anything. Well, I don't want to sound silly. Silliness is not doing it. Hallelujah. I'm not going to say that. I was, I was going to say something. The Holy Spirit said, no, you're not. <laughs> Glory to God. Way too many Christians. You used to be one of these. 
I used to be one of these. But way too many Christians put up with these type of circumstances in their lives simply because they don't know how to exercise their God-given authority. Amen. But that can change. Amen. And listen, if I'm preaching up on your porch this morning, <clears throat> it's only because I love you. And I'm tired. I'm spiritually tired of seeing believers sick. I'm spiritually tired of seeing believers broke, <clears throat> barely making their ends, ends meet. I'm sick and tired of Christians being depressed, taking all kinds of drugs for depression and anxiety. I'm sick and tired of Christians living defeated lives year after year after year after year after year. Maybe up one day and down the next. Positive on top of it. Man, I'm on top of the world today, Pastor. I'm blessed and highly favored. Next time you see him, well, the devil's been after me all week. Man, he sure got me wore out. I know, I'm just talking about me. You see, the devil wants us to well, you don't want us to know. Let me put it this way. The devil does not want you to know that you have authority. See, he wants to keep you bound up. He wants to keep you feeling like there's no way out of your situation. That your circumstances and your mountain is just too big for, for God to handle. Heard too many people say, well, God will heal me if he wants to. No, you're already healed. Amen. God will heal me. If he can just find time. Really? He created time. There is no time with God. All we have to do is believe. All we have to do is do what the word tells us to do. Amen? But the devil wants us to stay bound up with all kinds of situations in our lives. Health situations, financial situations, mental stress situations. He wants you and I to believe that there's no, nothing at all we can do about our situation. That things will just have to work out themselves. What's that saying? It is what it is. How many of you have ever said that? Never say it again. It is what you say it is. That's what authority says. It is what I say it is. And I say I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. I say I walk in divine health. I say there are no mental problems or, or mental situations in my life. There are no generational curses in my life. The generation began at the cross for me. What sign are you born under? The sign of the cross. Amen? Amen. It's okay to get an attitude about that too, guys. Not a sarcastic attitude. Just an attitude of knowing who you are in Christ and who He is in you. Hallelujah. Don't shout me down now just because I'm preaching good. If we don't get a hold of this, well, let me say it this way. There are believers, born-again Christians, feeling helpless in their situation because they don't know the authority they have. Therefore, they cannot stand in faith because when they know who they are and they know the authority they have and they, they just all they have to do is open their mouth and say something. What did we just read in James? Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Amen? But you have to use your authority to drive the devil out of your life. Listen, if you're going to be victorious in this life, guys, you're going to have to learn how to exercise your authority over the devil. And let me say this. If you'll just take time 
in this study over the next few weeks, if you'll just take time to study these scriptures out over and over and over again, listen to these video, the, this uh, the, what do they call them, podcasts, over and over and over again. Get it down in your spirit. Let it grow in you. What we, we learned last week, uh, how to grow the word of God in you. You have to keep watering it, watering it, listening to these, reading your Bible over and over and over again. But if you'll take the time to study this subject with me, and if you'll get a revelation of this truth way down in your heart, and then you'll start exercising your authority, God promises you and I that you'll live in a new place. He promises you and I that your life will never be the same. So this morning I'm asking, are you with me? Do you want, do you want God to move mightier in your life? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, that was my introduction. So let's launch out here in Ephesians chapter 1. And I want us to see from these scriptures that we do have authority. Ephesians 1, verse number 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the what? To the saints. That means he's talking to you. To the saints who are in Ephesus. To the saints who are at Hill Country Cowboy Church. And the faithful, underline that in your Bible, the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at this. Blessed be the Father and uh, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has, underline the word has, has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, sister. Notice Paul is telling us that God has already blessed us with every spiritual blessing. That also includes divine authority in Christ Jesus. Amen. Of course, we know that the word Christ here is not Jesus' last name. How many of you know that? Amen. The word uh, Christ here means the anointed one. It means God's anointing. It, it represents the power and authority of Almighty God. Are you with me? Now, look at this in chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 4. It says, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his what? His great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By his grace, you've been saved. And raised us up, what? Together and made us sit where? Together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The Amplified says in verse number six, it says this, it says, and he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together. I love this. Giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. So notice in these verses of scripture where your place is. Where is your place? With Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You're seated with Christ. You're not seated beside him. You're seated with him. That means the same authority that he had over the devil, you have over the devil. Can I get an amen? So if he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings, like, like Ephesians 1, 3 says, and then he sits down... He's done. That means he's done. I'm not doing anything else. He sat down. Now, he is still up there making intercession for us. But when he sat down, I'm done. I've done all I've done, I'm going to do. I stayed on that earth for three, uh, three years. Actually, in my ministry for 33 years. He was actually here for 33 years. <clears throat> But he said, I stayed in that ministry for three years. I showed you everything you can do. Y'all followed me around. Somebody's thinking, 
I wasn't there, Pastor. Well, then read your Bible. That puts you the same place he was. Don't it? So we followed him around. How many of you are following Christ? Amen. So we're following around. He said, you followed me around. You know what to do. Now do it. That was, a, that was all extra right there, guys. Praise God. But you're seated with him. He's done. We need to get a hold of that. So he tells us here in verse number two that we're seated with him. Why? Because we're commanded to carry on the same work that he did. Well, I could have heard a pin drop right there. You are commanded to carry on the work. Amen. Amen. Now, go back to Ephesians chapter 1. And let's see what we're seated above. It says in verse number 16, it says, uh, do not, I do not cease to, this is Paul praying for you and me and all the saints. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's what you're getting this morning. Amen. You're getting wisdom and revelation knowledge this morning. What you do with it is your business. Verse number 18, it says, The eyes of your understanding, excuse me, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Brothers and sisters, these are very, very powerful verses of scriptures because Paul is praying that the eyes, uh, that our eyes, my eyes and your eyes would be enlightened so we would know. So we would know. The word enlightened here is not talking about understanding something that's going to come. It's talking about understanding something that's already here. Now I'm going to have my, my assistant come up and help me, Brother Jason. <coughs> if you'll take that modesty cloth, put it over that hat. The hat right here. Oh, I told you to get one right there underneath your feet. Well, that's a small, that's not a modesty cloth. Huh? No, a modesty cloth is going to be a little big. There you go. Come on. I should have, we should have practiced this before. No, I don't want to see it. Put it over where they can't see it. Yeah, now you know where I'm going with it. See? There we go. There we go. Yeah, you're no Vanna White, buddy. That's for sure. <laughs> so he's it's, it's not talking about something we're going to get it's talking about something we already have that's just like when you come into this room if you didn't know that hat was there and it was covered up you know something's there but you don't know what it is until you reveal it until it's revealed to you <clears throat> you will not understand you brother you will not understand what we're talking about here until one of these, there you go, praise the Lord. Didn't he do a great job? Amen. We put you in a short skirt next time you'll get a better applause. <clears throat> oh no, I don't know about that. <laughs> I just, hallelujah. That made me lose all time. We have to get a revelation, guys. And it could come at any time. It could come while you're sitting here. I sit in church for years and didn't get a revelation of a lot of things. I'm still receiving revelation knowledge. And see what happens is one day you're going to get one of those ahas. Oh my gosh. And then you're going to run to your spouse and you're going to say, this is what pastor was talking about. And, uh, and she's going to go, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm glad you finally got it. <laughs> or it could be vice versa. The woman could go to the man and say, baby, did 
you know what I just got? He said, yeah, I do. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Amen. But have you got a picture? Have you got a picture? You got to have a revelation knowledge. You have to get God to reveal the truth to you. And you got to seek that, guys. It don't just come. It comes when you diligently seek him. Amen? That means every day. That don't mean you have to read your Bible and pray uh, eight hours a day at your house. But uh, it does mean this. Get everything else out of your life, out of your thought process, and meditate on the Word of God every day, all day long. And that can happen, because it happened to me. And listen, if it, he can cl <laughs> clear out my cluttered mind, he can clear out anybody's cluttered mind. Can I get an amen to that? We have to receive enlightenment. Our authority is here. All we have to do is get a hold of it. Can I get an amen to that? In other words, we've got to have an aha moment where we see it, we know it, and we act on it. Until you act on something, you don't know it. All you do is you have mental assent. You have a, a mental knowledge of it. You have to act on it. That's when you can say, yeah, I know it. That's how I told somebody this. I said, that's when God will move you from the, from the uh, hurt toe section to the amen section. Yeah, amen. Yeah. amen. Or, or you'll just go buy you some steel toe boots. I don't know. But see, when you see it and you know it's the truth, then you'll put action to it. And when you put action to God's word, it will change your life. Can you say amen to that? So he says here in verse number 18 that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now watch this, verse number 19. And what is, everybody say what is. And what is, not going to be, but what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who what? Believe. Believe. According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand. That's the covenant place of authority, guys. In the heavenly places. Now watch this. Verse number 21. Far above. Everybody say, far above. far above. Far above all principality, all power, all might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And put all things where? Under, Under his feet. Underline that in your Bible. Remember, you're seated with him. And gave him to be the head over all things to what? To the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now, to get the fullness of what Paul is saying, I want to read 19 through 22 from the Amplified. So just look at the monitors. He says in verse number 19, he says, And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable an unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule, authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, Above every title. Is cancer a title? Is diabetes a title? Is anxiety a title? Amen. Above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and in the world which are to come. And put all things under his feet and has appointed him universal and supreme head of the church 
a headship exercised through what? He's the head of the church, but his headship is exercised through who? Through us. That's exactly right. Amen. He's saying this. He's saying a headship, an anointing, or an authority exercised through the church. Who's the church? We are. Amen. So Paul is praying that the church, that's you and me, would get a divine revelation of where we're seated. Hallelujah to Jesus. I get excited every time I preach this. How many of you know I've preached this before? Amen. You got 2% back then, now you're getting another 2 Amen. See, he wants us to take our God-given place of authority and begin exercising that authority over our circumstances. Amen. You and I are seated above all rule, authority, power, and dominion, and above every name that's named. Heart disease is a name. Cancer is a name. Diabetes is a name. Uh, drug and alcohol addiction is a name. Depression is a name. You fill in the blank. Any name. You have authority over every name. Again, so if I missed anything in your life, you fill in the blank and know that you have authority over it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So Paul is praying that every Christian would get a revelation of his God-given authority that they have, and then they will start using that authority uh, in their lives. Delegated authority comes from the headship which is Christ Jesus. I want to make that clear so nobody leaves here saying, well, well pastor was saying we've got, we're the same as Jesus. I'm not saying that. He's the King of Kings. He's my Lord and Savior. But I can read. Amen? And what I read, read in this book, I believe. Every word, every jot, every tittle, every eye. I don't, I don't leave out nothing. I may not be perfect in all of it right now, but I believe it all. Yes. Amen? Amen? And I am his anointed representative on this planet. We are called what? Saints. Ambassadors for Christ Jesus. Amen. We are his anointed representatives. In other words, you and I are God's authority walking on this planet. And when you and I exercise our authority, it is our headship, which is Jesus, who is exercising authority through us. Right? Don't he live in you? Yes. Amen. But here's the key. Authority cannot and will not be exercised without us. It's just not going to happen. You can pray all you want to, and it ain't going to happen. You can pray Jesus comes down and waves his wand over you and makes you all better. But it ain't going to happen until you take authority over your life. And you start speaking to your th circumstances, speaking to the devil, whatever it is that's bothering you. Speak to your mountain. Can you say amen? See, it does no good for you to pray to God to do anything that he's already told you to do. And I agree. That's a sobering thought. Amen. I don't like hearing that either. I'd love for God just to do it all for me. I'd love for God just to be in charge of everything. But I have found in my 26 years of ministry, he's not. And I can quit whining and pleading and begging. He says, you do it. And we're going to talk more about that. Amen. <clears throat> Another scripture I want you to see is Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. <clears throat> Say amen when you're there. Matthew chapter 10, verse number 1. It says, and this again, this is Jesus talking. It says, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them what? Power, or one, one version says authority, over unclean spirits to cast them out. Now watch this. 
and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease. So Jesus gave his what? His disciples. That includes you and me. Power and authority over demonic spirits, sickness, and every disease. Now drop down to verse number seven. This will solidify it. It says, Jesus commands us to do, to use our authority. <clears throat> In verse, uh, Matthew 10, 7, he says, and as you go, that's kind of a command right there, isn't it? Yes. Preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now look at verse 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, Freely you have received, freely give. I really like the Passion Translation in verse 7 and 8. It says, and as you go, preach this message that heaven's kingdom realm is accessible, close enough to touch. You must continually bring healing to the lepers and to those who are sick and make it your habit to break off the demonic presence from people and raise the dead back to life. <clears throat> freely you have received the power of ki the kingdom. Freely release that power to others. Can I get an amen? amen. See, so that tells me you ought to be telling other people they got authority too. Let's start in our homes, God. Let's remind each other of the authority we have. Praise God. Jesus is not just suggesting we preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, and raise in the dead. He is commanding us to do that. Can you say amen? amen. Got one amen. Thank you, Brother Joe. Amen. I got a charity gay amen. The rest of you are afraid to say amen because you're saying so be it unto me. That means some, God's going to send you somebody to lay hands on. God's going to send you somebody to uh, preach the gospel to. Now will you say amen? Amen. Amen. Let me tell you what, you want a blessing in your life, start being a blessing to others. Amen. See, he's not just talking to the disciples here at Hill Country Cowboy Church. He's commanding every born-again Christian. That's everybody who says they are a follower of Jesus Christ. Either sitting in this room or watching my live stream this morning. He is commanding all of us to walk in and exercise our God-given authority. Can you say amen? God's word says signs, wonders, and miracles will follow every believer. Ooh, that's pretty heavy, isn't it? Not just some believers, but every believer. And of course, I want to give credit where credit's due. And I praise God that uh, we are seeing signs, wonders, and miracles here in this church, in this body. Uh, you know why? Because we got a lot of doers in here. We got a lot of doers. If you want to see things happening in your life on a, on a supernatural level, be a doer. Be a doer of God's word. Find you something you can do. Nothing else, just pray for people. Amen? Now, we see this same event that we're talking about here in Matthew over in Luke. I'm trying to hurry. Y'all need to listen quicker. Uh, Luke chapter 10. And I need you to remember that Jesus sent them out to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to cast out devils, cleanse the lepers. Well, in verse number 17... In Luke chapter 10, verse number 17, uh, the, they came back. And they came back with an amazing story to tell Jesus. Look at what they said. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. He said to them, he said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. From heaven. Behold, I give you what? 
authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. That's over demonic powers. That's not over little snakes and scorpions, guys. Don't want nobody coming up here saying my kid got bit by a snake. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, is that a true statement or not? If that's a true statement, why would anybody ever be afraid something was going to happen? Just asking for a friend. Amen. They amplified in verse number 19. It says, Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power that the enemy possesses. And nothing shall any, in any way harm you. Notice we have authority over all the power of the enemy. Not part of it, all of it. Get a revelation of that, my brother and sister. The devil has no power to do anything in your life unless you give it to him. When Christians get a hold of that revelation, they will put the devil under their feet where he was, where Jesus put him, and they'll keep him there. You know what I, I'm praying that this does? Or I'm believing God this does? That eventually, every born-again Christian that comes through these doors and gets under this teaching will end the saying, the devil is doing something to me. Well, the devil sure attacking me this week. Devil's doing this. Devil, we need to quit glorifying the devil. Amen. Take the authority that you have. Put the devil under his place. In his place, then you'll come in and say, "Man, I stuck my foot on the devil's neck this week, and I just—he I, was already under. I just twisted it a little bit, <laughs> just to remind him who's in charge." Amen. In other words, when the body of Christ starts understanding divine authority and then they'll start standing uh, in, their, in their place of authority and they'll start being God's representative on this planet. Amen. They'll start doing the things that God tells them to do, the things they hear every Sunday to do. We'll start doing them. We'll start putting the devil in his place keeping him there. Therefore, we can start helping other people. See, you can't help anybody else as long as you're always fighting the devil. You need to settle it once and for all that you have dominion over him. Put him under your feet. That way you can help somebody in your family. Amen. And again, let me remind you, it is God's authority. But you and I have been authorized to use it. Amen. Are you with me? So let's look at one more scripture. You thought I was closing on that last one, but I got one more. I'm going to read through them real quickly. And then we'll close. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8. And I'm going to go ahead and move on so you can just look at it on the board. It says, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. Again, I tell you that word is the Greek is Elohim. So it, we can read it like this. For you have made him man a little lower than yourself. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have what? Dominion over the works of your hands. And you have put all things where? Under his feet. Highlight this whole set of scriptures in your Bible. And every time you feel downtrodden, go read it. And get it in your spirit. Amen? God's word, just look at the board uh, God's word, because I'm, I'm sure nobody has that translation. And, do you? Uh, okay. I don't want to lie. <clears throat> God's word says it like this in verse 5 and 6. He says, you have made him, talking about man and woman, a little lower than yourself. 
You have crowned him or her with the glory and honor. You have made them, him and her, to rule what your hands have created. You have put everything, everybody say everything, under his and her, what? Control. This is one of them scriptures that's in my heart, guys. I can't always quote it to you when I tell you, quit telling me that God's in control. He says right here, he made man and woman a little lower than himself, and he put us in control. Don't shout me down now. Get a hold of it. Is that what your Bible says? He's put everything under our feet. Whatever your scripture says there. Brothers and sisters, and I am really am closing this time. We've been given divine authority to handle all of God's affairs on this planet. And of course, we do so by the name of Jesus. We can't do anything without Jesus, right? Amen. So don't, again, don't take me wrong. We've been given authority, but it's through the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Verse six of God's word, and this is my point, says God has made us to rule what he created and he put all things under our control. So all you and I ever need to do is to learn more about walking in the authority that God has given us. And we'll talk more about that next week. Amen? Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Everybody say praise the Lord. Lord. Say this with me. Say God God has has given me complete authority over all my circumstances and over the devil. The devil's under my feet, and that's where he's going to stay. From this day forward, I'm going to walk in my authority, and I'm going to change my life. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we never lend a service without giving everybody an opportunity to make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. And I know a lot of everybody's heard this before. There may be someone watching my live stream this morning that think when you take Jesus as your Savior, He automatically becomes your Lord, but that is not true. You have to allow Him to become your Lord. And that means you have to surrender your entire life to Him. And that is a process. So I don't, uh, I don't want to say that anybody in here has arrived. We're all a work in progress. Amen? But we want to give everyone that's watching by live stream and maybe some in here today that have not completely surrendered their life to Jesus to do so this morning. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's you in, in this room this morning or watching my live stream and you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, you want to learn so much about Him that you continuously walk in victory in this life. If that's you this morning, whether you're watching my live stream or in this building this morning, would you raise your hand? Praise the name of the Lord. I even raise my hand. Praise God. I want more and more of God. Amen. Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. <laughs> no, it's not your Lord and Savior. I'm so, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Don't say that. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Change me from the inside out. Show me what you want me to do. I'll be obedient and I'll do it. In your precious name I pray. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Praise God. Well, I do believe he's your Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 The last thing we always want to close out with is this, that we serve a miracle working God. Guess where you are in line? Next.
You're next in line for your miracle. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.